Soldiers Magazine and Soldiers Radio and TV, this is Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Soldiers Magazine and Soldiers Radio and TV. How do you hear me? And we've got you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the space station. All right, thank you. Uh, sir, I want to start off by, uh, did you always dream of being an astronaut? Uh, that's a great question. Actually, I get asked that a lot by uh, uh, by young people. And um, and uh, when I was growing up, of course, uh, it was. It, I think early on in the early years, it's sort of a big, too big of a dream for me to think about. And uh, and so I just wanted to fly. And I I thought it was uh, something that was actually beyond my reach when I was a, a young student. And. Uh if you if you did dream of being an astronaut, how did uh, joining the army uh, facilitate your becoming an ast astronaut? Well, I I, uh, I eventually ended up deciding to go to uh, to West Point, which I thought was a great leadership school that would uh, that uh, teach me leadership and discipline, and uh, and allow me a chance to uh, become a military pilot, which was my dream. Uh, when I was a young a young child, and so uh, I dreamed of being an army helicopter pilot, and uh, and then uh, it, it just worked out from there as I progressed through my career. And you went to the uh, the uh, um, test pilot school. Um, is that where you uh, you you learned uh, that you wanted to be an astronaut? Where you got the uh, the urge to uh, aim high? I think that's where everything really came together for me because uh, be, uh, before that point, I really thought that it was still sort of a dream that was out of my reach. Um, I didn't really have the experience uh, that I thought I would need as far as uh, being a test pilot and things like that. And so, uh, so I. Um, so I. Uh, I uh, eventually got a chance to go to the test pilot school and got around people that were working in this industry and uh, and people that had, had uh, contacts at NASA, and so it really worked out for me at that point. Okay, how is commanding the space station different than a regular Army command, sir? Well, it's a little bit different. Uh, uh, it's more like a small unit command, and um, there's only... Stand by just a second. We got a little bit of a bleed over. Okay, it's uh, it's very very similar to a to a small unit uh, command in the military. Uh, we only have six people on board. We have a lot of equipment, a lot of very 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 expensive uh, and uh, very uh, complex equipment on board. And so, uh, so in that respect, it's uh, very much like a small unit uh, command. And uh, as a commander and as an, a an astronaut up on the space station, what is your uh, primary mission there on the station? Well, my primary mission now, uh, when I first came up in June, I've been aboard the space station now for about four months, and I've got two months left in my, uh, my tour up here. And uh, the first three months, I was a flight engineer and really learning the systems and learning the science on board. And now I took over command as the commander of the space station uh, just a few weeks ago. And, um, and so now I'm the commander. So uh, like the commander of any unit, I'm responsible for everything that uh, goes on here and the, the way of conduct of science, uh, maintenance of the hardware, um, uh, keeping the the machine flying, and so uh, it's it's a real fun job, uh, and I've got a great uh, great crew, and so it uh, it makes it very very exciting. Uh, what type of research are you conducting up there? 
That's a very good question. Of course, that's uh, that's our primary focus right now is the is the full utilization of the uh, of the space station as an orbiting laboratory for our scientists. And uh, you know, the the hope now and the dream that we have is to bring back uh, to Earth and to uh, to the to the human race uh, ways that we can better take care of. Uh, take care of our health um, and take care of our planet as well. And so we've got uh, we've got a tremendous amount of research going on in the medical field, uh, trying to learn new breakthroughs for uh, bone loss, uh, for uh, possibly uh, finding a cure for cancer, uh, for new methods of transporting pharmaceuticals through the body to fight off uh, different diseases that we face as humans on the earth. We also have uh, earth sciences going on on board where we we have uh, special equipment that looks at the Earth, uh, studies uh, different and different hyperspectral uh, uh, cameras and things, and uh, ways that we can better uh, be better stewards of our our farmland, our forests, and things like this to to better take care of our our planet. And uh, so it's uh, we've got uh, research on everything in between. We do have some research research as well to help us to study about what happens to the human body when it comes to comes when we come to space, and so. Uh, for those our children and grandchildren that take us further out uh, to other planets, um, they'll be able to uh, to be able to sp uh, spin off the um, uh, the research that we're doing to help them uh, to stay alive and um, and uh, maintain the vehicle when they get to another orbiting our planetary body, and be able to walk when they get there. Uh, sir, what are some of the challenges you face up there on a daily basis? Well, um, space always uh, seems to have surprises for us. It, uh, uh, you know, it is uh, when you're inside. It does seem like you're. Uh, you sometimes you can lose sight of that you're out in space, traveling at 17,500 miles per hour, about five miles per second, and so, and outside of this uh, space station. Uh, we don't have the protective belts uh, that we do to protect us from the uh, solar radiation and things, and so we have temperature swings on outside of the space station that can change by as much as 500 degrees in 45 minutes, because we're orbiting the Earth once every 90 minutes. Um, we uh, get a sunrise or sunset every 45 minutes, and so, and in direct sunlight, uh, the outside of the station and equipment and hardware that's working on the outside uh, faces temperatures of up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And then when we go into eclipse, when the uh, back on the backside of the Earth uh, from the sun, they could get to be 300 degrees below zero. And so it's a uh, uh, mechanical pieces of hardware uh, have a difficult time operating. We also um, are being bombarded with uh, cosmic radiation as well. So sometimes um, computers and electrical electrical systems uh, that are operating on board uh, don't like the exposure to radiation. And so we see um, some very, very interesting um, things in the way of maintenance of computer systems and hardware on board, both inside and outside of the space station. Um, can you tell me, what's it like working with your Russian counterparts? Well, that that's actually a real thrill. It's um, you know, for me, do, having done all my training in the in the during the Cold War, and then being able to uh, to work together hand in hand with them. In fact, when I took over command, it was from a, a Russian Air Force officer, Colonel, and um, uh, it was really really a neat experience to be able to to be able to look back. And um, and see where we've come from, you know, just just in my in my lifetime, in my service in the army, uh, back to the Cold War war era, and uh, how far we've come now, uh, working together as partners. It's really really encouraging, and it's um, it uh, I think it speaks volumes for those that have gone before us, uh, that have paved this way for us, and now uh, we as a uh, will be transitioning to. Uh, to passing that torch to our kids and our grandkids, uh, that hopefully they can continue this um, uh, this uh, partnership in space, and that would carry on into other things on our planet as well. Uh, sir, uh, what do you hope to gain, or have you already gained from the experience? Well, um, I'll tell you, it hasn't disappointed me at all. It's, uh, there are a lot of personal and professional uh, 
things that I was looking forward to. Um, of course, um, uh, professionally, uh, really the pinnacle of my career uh, as an Army officer and as an aviator, uh, to be able to be the commander of the International Space Station is really uh, about as high as I can reach now uh, uh, in, in the way of my goals and dreams uh, professionally. And personally, I wanted to experience uh, not only get a chance to command again um, at a small unit level comparatively, and then, um, but also just personally be able to really feel what it's like to live and work in space. I had a shuttle mission before as a short duration mission, just a couple of weeks. And um, I knew that this was gonna be very challenging being away from home for so long, but I was very, very uh, much looking forward to um, the experience of living in space and then going back to the earth and being able to walk again under gravity. Uh, speaking of the earth, when you look back at the earth, uh, what, what goes through your mind? Well, I'll tell you, the Earth is, uh, you know, I get asked a lot by our young people uh, what my favorite planet is. I always tell them planet Earth is my favorite. But when you're, when you're out here in space, when you're even inside of the space station and outside, I've had a chance to do several spacewalks. Uh, when you look at deep space, it's so dark and so vast. It's actually pretty frighteningly um, empty and dark. Um, and then you look at the space station and the space shuttle, uh, when, the, when it's here as well. The colors, there it's pretty much a lack of color. I mean, it's, it's white and black and colors of uh, different metallic colors, very, very sterile uh, feel. And then you turn towards the Earth and it's like this explosion of color, an explosion of motion and an explosion of life in the middle of this vast uh, wasteland of nothing. And so um, it's, it's quite a dramatic um, contrast uh, looking at the earth as com as compared to the back background of deep space and so it's uh, it really takes your breath away the things that you can enjoy just by looking at our planet uh, does it change your perspective on her on humanity uh, whenever you're uh, looking back on the earth It does. It uh, you know it makes you th it makes you think about you know the things that we worry about and the things that we concern ourselves with uh, you know petty differences and things like that you know the things that we squabble over both as people and as countries and and uh, and, uh, and things and so and it makes you you know of course when you look down uh, on the planet now uh, you can see the different landforms and the continents and of course there are no borders and. Um, and you and you begin, you know, the, these petty differences uh, that you think about and the things that you worry about uh, when you're on Earth, they seem to sort of fade away, and you you begin to look at things in in a in a broader picture. It's like, wow, you know, it's like we're all trying to kind of live together and, and cooperate and uh, uh, and work together on this little blue marble in the middle of space, and uh, and sometimes I think we we tend to lose perspective that uh, we have a beautiful place to live and I uh, know that sometimes we're not good stewards of that uh, of that uh, our home and um, it puts things in perspective that uh, uh, that there truly are no borders and uh, the borders that we make are, are man-made and, and um, uh, both uh, you know physical borders uh, between countries and also uh, cultural and um, and uh, and just like emotional borders that we put up uh, between between peoples and so it helps to peel those things away uh, sir what's next for you personally and professionally when you come back to earth well that's a good question i'm still active duty army um, i uh, i belong to the army space and missile defense command uh, which is actually, uh, interestingly enough, is a is a, we're a descendant of the original um, Army Ballistic Missile Agency that uh, Warner von Braun worked uh, worked with in the Huntsville area, and which brought us our very first um, uh, the U.S. its very first satellite, Explorer One, and so the Army really was first in space, and uh, and the unit that I work for now, uh, General Campbell in the um, in the Army Space and Missile Defense Command. Um, it, uh, very, very much is our, is our, um, we're very much the first in space. And so, so I'm looking for opportunities maybe to come back out into the Army to serve. And um, 
And if uh, those are opportunities aren't available for me when I get back, uh, I'll uh, consider staying with NASA and maybe, maybe get a chance to fly again aboard the space station. Uh, sir, do you think anything could possibly uh, top this uh, job and this experience? It would be hard to imagine uh, something that would top this. I have to pinch myself every day, especially when you get a chance to look out the window. Um, it's, uh, it's, I feel very blessed uh, to be here. I, I, I feel, you know, the, the, just a whole range of emotions uh, being here. Of course, I, I, uh, I love the Army and, uh, and my experiences in the Army, and so I've got a lot of my, uh, my classmates from West Point, uh, folks that I've served with, with over the years. Uh, that are scattered around the globe, a lot of them in Afghanistan and some in Iraq, and uh, just stationed around the globe. And so I feel, uh, in, 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 that, in that light, I feel a bit guilty from time to time that, uh, that I get a chance to experience this. And, um, uh, but I know that, uh, 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 that it's an opportunity of a lifetime as well, and that, that I can, I can uh, uh, serve our Army and serve uh, our country here as well uh, just by doing, uh, doing a, a fantastic job here as commander and also uh, doing the research that's needed here aboard the space station. So um, I, uh, I'm looking forward to different opportunities when I get, when I get back to the planet, and, um, and it's just a real thrill to be able to, uh, to stay in, in service to the Army and service to our country uh, here aboard the space station. Well, uh, sir, from Soldiers Magazine and from Soldiers Radio and Television, I want to thank you for your time, and uh, good luck uh, up there, and uh, maybe we'll see you whenever you get back to Earth, sir. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. I, I really appreciate uh, everything that you do for our soldiers uh, stationed around the globe. And um, it's always uh, uh, you, you give us a real connection uh, back home and uh, and to, and really to the Army as a corps. And uh, and you uh, you bind us together and, and keep that um, uh, and keep that brotherhood strong. And we really appreciate everything that you do for us at Soldiers Magazine. Thank you so much. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Soldiers Magazine and Soldiers Radio and TV. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communication.